Welcome to another scriptural study. In this scriptural study, we will be exploring the Latin and our English name, Jesus. Because Latin was the language used by ancient Romans as per the Cambridge Dictionary, let alone other historical and etymological resources, which allows us to further understand this world religious Latin name, known today as Jesus, and its association to its original Greek name known as Isus, and pronounced Jesus today in Spain and other Latino American countries. Yes, the Latin Roman name Jesus is derived from the Greek name Isus, and as we can see from its Greek origins as originally recorded, 941 times in the 1611 King James Version, as per this scriptural verse example that we see here with the book of Matith Yahu, chapter 1, verse 21. We will be taking a deep dive etymological journey in and with the Greek text of the book known today as Revelation, once known as Hazan in chapters 13, verse 1 and verse 18, and as well looking into the historical and archaeological evidence on why these names are known as being blasphemous, as described in the book of Hazan, chapter 13, verse 1. And once again, this is another scriptural study in which it is extremely imperative that you ensure your mobile devices and or computer monitors are configured to full screen mode. And yes, stop the video when needed to further focus on the scriptural and associated witnesses. So, why would this Latin and Greek name be insulting? Why do these names show contempt and or lack of reverence for the Creator? And why are these Greek and Latin names blasphemous and or profane? And as well, what do they have to do with the three Greek alphanumeric letters 666? The answer and our method to resolve these very important scriptural questions comes to us in Hazan chapter 13, verse 18. It states, The one, and are the ones who can obtain wisdom, and are a complete understanding of who these blasphemous names actually are, are the ones that can actually calculate the number, and are names of this beast. And wisdom, by its very definition, is having the quality of experience, knowledge, and or the skill of discernment, and in this case, scriptural and etymological discernment. But how does one go about the process of scripturally calculating and or measuring scriptural experience, scriptural knowledge, with the ongoing development of scriptural skills in discernment, especially when it comes to these blasphemous names. This is where we get to thank many Bereans over the years that helped us learn about a proposed scriptural study format that provides a scriptural method to test and prove all things. Because the information we are about to share on these names of blasphemy is nothing new. In fact, and in all cases, the Berean approach to scriptural study is based on a mindset of not having a desire of fellowship with the fruitless works of darkness, but rather to reprove these works of darkness. Because Scripture is clear. All matters being reproved are manifested by the light, 
which is based on a simple scriptural method of correcting with a gentle and kind intention in testing and proving all things to learn what is true and what is not. Bereans that can do this consistently is due in part to a reliable and or extremely effective research methodology. Again, the information we are about to share on these names of blasphemy is nothing new. In fact, Sir James Fraser in 1890, with his book The Golden Bough, manifested the light of scriptural truth and exposed the same fruitless works of darkness. Just as Alexander Hislop did in 1853 with his book The Two Babylons with the very same research method techniques, just as C.J. Coster utilized in his 1996 book, Come Out of Her, My People. Again, these names of blasphemy are well known due to a simple scriptural research methodology, which is always manifested by the light of scriptural truth just as these two authors as well found out that Isus, Jesus, and Jesus are of pagan origins. So, for those that have subscribed to this YouTube channel, you are then aware that we and many others have had the privilege of sharing this proposed scriptural study format that many other Bereans have utilized in the past. And thus, where this proposed scriptural study format was born, which is based on Acts chapter 18, verse 15, and other associated verses. Yes, there is nothing new under the sun when it comes to doing scriptural word studies, scriptural name studies, and scriptural law studies. And truth be known, it was this proposed scriptural study format that expedited the process of our learning the celestial clock and calendar of Yahuwah. Yes, indeed, here is the wisdom. Let him calculate, measure, and earn number by allowing the Father of Lights with his lights in the Shamayim to teach us how to number our days by measuring calculating and numbering his three witnesses of light daily with the sun, three witnesses of light daily with the moon, and the three witnesses of light daily with the stars, all of which work in perfect harmony to tell time, more specifically, the appointed times of Yahuwah. And Bereans utilize the same proposed scriptural study format to this day in serving others in scriptural love on how to calculate, measure, number, and or count the cost daily before building anything. Hallelujah for the wisdom of sitting down first to calculate, measure, number, and or count the cost before building anything. Hallelujah that the same wisdom, which is a process of being able to calculate and or number our days as an example, let alone guarantee the financial success before we build anything, can also be utilized to identify the blasphemous names of the beast. And as well, hallelujah for the wisdom, scriptural wisdom, of calculating, measuring, and numbering, which has helped many from becoming and or remaining to be slaves to the debt-based system of the worldwide financial beast. This proposed scriptural study format is designed consciously with the intent to combat our characteristics of human frailty. Because isn't it true that our subjective emotions at times can hinder our progress in being scripturally objective? Thus, getting in the way on occasion of achieving scriptural wisdom, let alone being able to apply scriptural wisdom here and now in our very lives? Yes, 
a proposed scriptural study format that is designed to separate feelings from facts. Because those that continue to learn about scriptural humility for the purpose of applying scriptural humility in their everyday lives know that the human heart as per scripture is deceitful above all things as the human heart can at times carry a level of pride far more concerned with who is right rather than the humble approach of what is scripturally true because Isn't it true that our feelings and our emotions, the majority of time, regrettably, do not align with scriptural facts, just as the Apostle Shaul shared on many occasions? So, let us suggest, once again, that we take this proposed objective scriptural study format to test and prove if these names are indeed scripturally blasphemous and or profane, and why? Keeping in mind that this proposed scriptural study approach, let alone this subject, is nothing new under the sun. As always then, this scriptural study will be organized with the proposed method of the scriptural study format, starting with the seven intent questions for this particular study, along with the etymological witnesses, historical and archaeological witnesses, and yes, empirical evidence that can be tested here and now. And as always, and most important of all, to determine what the impact may be from this scriptural study as it relates to our inheritance. So, without further ado, let's begin with question one. Will this scriptural study on the three Greek alphanumeric letters equating to 666 provide any value? Because why are there various names for the Messiah? Wasn't the Messiah a Hebrew with only one Hebrew name that he received from his father? And why does the 1611 King James Version utilize a non-Hebrew Greek name known as Isus? And why do the majority of translations today now use a Latin name Jesus, pronounced Jesus? Is this a possible clue why the names Isus and Jesus are associated to the Greek writings, let alone why the Apostle Yahukunin, known as John today, referenced the three Greek alphanumeric letters that equate to 666 in the book of Revelation? And why... Does the same apostle in the book of Yahukunin confirm in chapter 5, verse 43, that the Messiah came in his father's Hebrew name? And furthermore, then state that the world would not receive him in that Hebrew name. With further clarification that if another came in another name, this is what the world would receive. Because, isn't it scripturally true that the original Hebraic writings with the Old Covenant shared in the book known as Exodus today, which states that the name of the Father was Yahuwah, and that this name was to be remembered for all generations? And isn't it scripturally true that the renewed covenant, known as the New Testament today, from the book of Acts, Record for us as well that there is no other name under the heaven given among men by which we need to be saved? Isn't it also scripturally true that the Apostle Shaul, known as Paul today, was saying the very same thing as the prophet Yaal, known as Joel today, as they were all referencing and or quoting the Old Covenant writings? Even the book of Romans was clear about the one true name, and that this name, 
Yahuwah is not and was never linked to the three Greek alphanumeric letters that equated to 666. And thus why this ongoing scriptural study was extremely value added in the past as Bereans in various time periods wrote about the fact that Jesus is indeed Isus, just as the Apostle Yehokanan referenced with the three Greek alphanumeric letters that equate to 666. Why did Yehokanan share the topic of these three Greek alphanumeric letters that equated to 666 in the plural sense? as there would not be just one name of blasphemy, but rather names of blasphemy, and that these names could be measured and are calculated as a number equating to 666. Please remember this, as we will come back to this point later in the presentation. Again, the one true Messiah came in his father's Hebrew name, not a Latin and or Greek name, as per the book of Yahukanan, chapter 5, verse 43. Even the apostle Shaul, known as Paul today, wrote in 2 Corinthians, chapter 11, verse 4, that the one true Messiah came in his father's name, but that the world would regrettably proclaim another. And he shared the world would put up with it well enough. When did the Apostle Yahukanan share this subject about these three Greek alphanumeric letters equating to 666? The bulk of informational sources date the book of Revelation to the reign of the Roman Emperor Domitian, sometime between AD 81 and AD 96. And the evidence to date tends to confirm this as per these references. While there are still some that debate, it may have been penned around AD 68 or 69, as related to the impending destruction of Yerushalayim in AD 70. Whatever the case, these dates provide an excellent historical marker, which provides further proof that the Apostle Yahukanin penned this subject matter in a Greek province which at this time period was being ruled by Rome. But where and or from what location did the Apostle Yehukanen share these three Greek alpha numeric letters that equated to 666? Well, the scriptural record is clear. Yehukanen penned this subject matter about these three Greek alphanumeric letters, which equated to 666 on the island of Patmos. In fact, Yahukanen was exiled to the island of Patmos, which is a small island in the Aegean Sea, which is situated between Athens, Greece, and Ephesus, which is now the modern-day city of Izmir in Turkey. But why was the apostle Yahukanen exiled in Patmos? Well, simply put, for political reasons. Not as a prisoner in a literal sense, denoting things like shackles or physical confinement in a cell or forced labor, but just a place he had to live and not leave. But why? Because he was preaching the word of the Almighty Yahuwah. Yes, the word itself, the son of Yahuwah, known as the first and last, the Aleph and Ta in Hebrew. And as the apostle Yahukanan clarifies further, for the witness of Yahushua, the Messiah himself, which came with much pressure in this society during this time period. But what? was he specifically witnessing to those seven assemblies in Asia Minor? And just how was he sharing it that made it so politically incorrect in these Greek provinces that were being ruled by Rome during this time period? Could it be that he was sharing 
who the true first and last was, and that the Messiah was a Hebrew and nothing else. Because if the apostle Yahukanan during this time period was preaching and writing about the Hebrew Messiah, he certainly was not sharing anything about a Greek Alpha and Omega, which is indeed associated to the Greek name Isus, let alone the undisputed fact that he wasn't sharing anything about the name of Jesus. Why? Think about it. The letter J didn't even exist in the time of the Apostle Yahukunin thus showing further why it is so beneficial to follow this proposed scriptural study format. In fact, and according to the Encyclopedia Britannica, the form of the letter J was unknown in any alphabet until the 14th century. It was not until the 16th century that the letter J was even utilized in the English language. And the letter J is still not part of the Greek, and our Hebrew language to this very day. So, was the Apostle Yahukunin witnessing a Greek deity known as Isus? And or was he witnessing a Hebrew Messiah, being the first and last known Hebraically as the Aleph and Ta, just as the Old Covenant Hebraic writings that witness about the first and last? Because... It is an empirical and etymological fact that the first and last letter of the Hebrew alphabet is used to identify the one true Hebraic Messiah, whose name is Yahushua, which literally means Yahuwah delivers. Yes, Yahushua came in his father's name, and yes, the world and its world religions reject this name. If this subject matter is of further interest to you, please watch this scriptural study video entitled The Aleph and Ta Conspiracy of World Religions. Because even in this day and age, it is politically incorrect to share this information publicly. Please learn what happened to the Apostle Shaul, known as Paul today, when he attempted to share the one true Hebraic name in Athens, as we can read in the book of Acts, chapter 17. Because the way, truth, and life, as it is in the Messiah Yahushua, caused great commotion back then as well, in the very same vicinity. And Shaul was also imprisoned for it. But I digress. Let's finish this portion of the study and answer the question on who did the Apostle Yahukunin say the associated names were with these three Greek alphanumeric letters, which equate to 666. Are there any etymological witnesses and or evidence that can prove why the Latin name Jesus, which today is Jesus, and or the Greek name Isus, is associated to the three Greek alphanumeric letters, which equate to 666? And why are these names insulting? And why do they show contempt with a lack of reverence for the Creator? And why do these profane names need a form of scriptural wisdom that demands that we must measure and or calculate the number of this beast, which adds up to a numerical value of 666. Question. Are we dealing with names and or a number? Or both? Again, rather than guessing, let us follow the proposed scriptural study format to see what the etymological evidence reveals because there are excellent research tools today like this awesome feature with the online blue letter bible research tool which has the strong's concordance reference system that pronounces each of the greek letters you are studying as an example 
the apostle Yahukanan was not speaking and or writing in English. He obviously was sharing the three Greek alpha numeric letters and or symbols that when calculated equate to 666. And yes, during this time period, in both the Greco and Roman era, letters were utilized as numbers, as the historical and etymological record proves. But how do we pronounce each of these Greek alpha numeric symbols individually? And as well, do they manifest and or reveal various names of blasphemy when pronounced and are spoken together? Do you remember at the start of the presentation the note about keeping in mind the 1611 King James Version utilizing Isus? Well, let's look at how these three Greek alphanumeric letters, when calculated, to see if they add up to 666 and are etymologically associated to Isus as written in the 1611 King James Version. Let us now measure and or calculate the number of this beast and learn how to pronounce its blasphemous names because both in the classical and modern Greek alphabets, the 22nd letter of this Greek alphabet contains the first alpha numeric letter of the various names of this beast and carries a numerical value of 600 and is pronounced as e and or he as per this simple Greek language tutorial. When watching and listening to this Greek etymological tutorial on this Greek letter, please view the CC captions as the narrator speaks in Greek. And as well, notice the two ways of pronouncing this one Greek alpha numeric letter as previously shared. Ας ξεκινήσουμε με το χ. Καταρχάς, είναι πολύ σημαντικό να θυμάστε ότι το χ έχει δύο προφορές ανάλογα με το ποιο γράμμα έχει μπροστά του. Το χ προφέρεται όπως το προφέρω τώρα, δηλαδή χ όταν είναι μπροστά από «η» και «ε». Οπότε η λέξη «χέρι», «χέρι» η λέξη «χιόνι». Όμως, σε όλα τα υπόλοιπα γράμματα και φωνή εντά και σύμφωνα προφέρεται «χ», «χ». Οπότε έχουμε «χάνο», «χρήμα», «χα», 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 «χα». So, as we can see and hear, this particular Greek alphanumeric letter, which equates to 600, can be pronounced as E, as in Isus, and or He, as in Jesus. Yes, E, as in Isus, as per the 1611 King James Version, incorrect name for the Messiah, yes, Isus is Jesus. And in the Spanish and or Latino language, Isus is pronounced Jesus. More on this later. The next alpha numeric letter in question is the 14th letter of both the classical and modern Greek alphabet. And its numerical value equates to a number of 60 with the phonetic focus on the S, as we can hear in this visual tutorial. Xi, Xi, Xi. Okay then, now let's move on to the final letter of the three alpha numeric letters in both the classical and modern Greek alphabet, as this final letter is known as Sigma and carries a numerical value of 6 and is pronounced Z with the focus on the Z as in Z as per this audio-visual tutorial. Z, Z, Z. 
Yes, the etymological evidence is overwhelming, as backed up by the incredible amount of historical witnesses on why the 1611 King James Version incorrectly named the one true Messiah with the three Greek alphanumeric letters and or symbols that equate to 666 as proven from the earliest of historical writings on the book of Revelation with chapter 13 verse 18 from the Apostle Yahukunin. Yes, indeed, a very regrettable etymological and historical empirical fact that the world has rejected the Father and Son's name only to accept another one, just as the Apostle Shaul verified as well. But there are other empirical witnesses that highlight why the names Isus, Jesus, and Jesus are associated with blasphemy. After all, are there not famous people who have this name, like the famous soccer player known as Jesus Navas Gonzalez, and are the famous Major League Baseball player known as Jesus Miguel Flores? And are even the famous Spanish director known as Jesus Salvador Trevino? Well, let's take another look at the historical, archaeological, and empirical witnesses of the origins of the names of blasphemy, such as Isus, Jesus, and Jesus as they are all made up of the three Greek letters that equate to 666, as previously reviewed. And here's why. Because these names of blasphemy are associated with paganism, as the messianic belief, as Alexander Hislop states, that Isus was linked to Ictus, the fish, which was and is none other than Dagon, which is a Babylonian fish deity. Augustine, the celebrated pagan Catholic Church father, in his book, City of God, rather childishly gave his reason for doing this. Because if you combined the initial letters of the five Greek words, which are Isus, Christos, Theo, Uos, Soter, which means Jesus Christ, Son of God, Savior. Yes, childish indeed. But Tertullian, another pagan author and church father, was even more frank in his blasphemous identification of the Messiah Yahushua with a fish by calling him, quote, our fish, end of quote, as recorded in a book entitled Symbols, Signs, and Their Meaning by Arnold Wittick, in which Tertullian wrote further, quote, But we, little fishes, are born in water according to our fish ictus, Isos Christos, end of quote. Why were these pagan Catholic Church fathers so keen to identify the Messiah, Yahushua, with a fish? Because the adoration or veneration of the fish emblem is clearly and emphatically non-scriptural and forbidden, as we can read in the book of Debarim. In the two Babylons, we read, quote, that Ictus, or the fish, was one of the names of Bacchus, end of quote. And Bacchus, also known as Dionysus, who was a Greek god of wine and debauchery, was a major figure in Greek mythology. And Bacchus was just another name for the sun deity known as Tamaz. And as per the historical and archaeological records, Tammuz's father was none other than Nimrod, the king of Babylon. 
while Tamaz's mother was none other than Semiramis. And the historical and archaeological record reveals that she was the crescent moon goddess known as Alat, also known as Astarte, Queen of Heaven, and Babylon. No, no, no. The Catholic Virgin is not the scriptural Miriam, known as Mary today. And to think, we are just skimming the surface, as there is so much, much more to share. But due to time constraints, we must summarize. So, what is the impact on our scriptural inheritance as it relates to what we have just reviewed? Isn't the book of Acts in chapter 4 verse 12 clear that there is only one name given among men for our deliverance, let alone inheritance? Again, didn't the Messiah Yahushua come in his father's name? And didn't he state the world would not receive him in that name? Even though the prophet Moshe clarified Hebraically in his old covenant writings just who the Aleph and Ta the first and last, actually was. Because, have we not measured and or calculated the number of this beast? Have we not manifested the light of scriptural, etymological, historical, and archaeological witnesses of these pagan names of blasphemy? That this worldwide beast system carries? because there is far more to the beast than the world realizes. Whatever we are thinking now, we must think bigger. We must think systemically on a worldwide scale about this beast, because it is this worldwide beast system that we all must overcome. Please do not be surprised, then, that the Mother Church of Christianity and the Pope himself, when measured and numbered, equates to a calculation of 666 as well. Hallelujah for the scriptural fact that there is a massive and significant difference between being an Antichrist as compared to being an anti-Messiah. Please do not sit on the Laodicean fence, especially when it comes to the traditions of men as influenced by Isus. Find out why Jesus Christ is an anti-Messiah as per this scriptural study video. Find out who the real sacred name movement actually is. Because this worldwide beast flaunts the feast of the sacred heart of Isus, which is associated to the Greek goddess of recovery known as Iso, as per this scriptural study video. Yes, indeed. Baal God believers are known as pagan Lord God believers, as per this scriptural study video. Yes, think bigger, because this beast system with its blasphemous names has infiltrated all world religions. Again, do not be surprised of the significance of Jesus in Islam which is reflected in his being mentioned in the Quran in 93 verses, with various titles attached, such as Son of Mary, and other relational terms mentioned directly and indirectly, over 187 times. He is thus the most mentioned person in the Quran by reference, 25 times by the name Isa, Yes, you heard that right. Isa is Islam for Jesus, the son of Mary. Yes, Isus is Jesus, who is as well Isa. And notice what happens when we utilize scriptural wisdom 
and we calculate the name of Allah and its similarity to the three Greek alpha numeric letters, which equates to 666 as well. And as always, don't trust me. Do your own research with the proposed scriptural format, as there is much, much more. If interested, explore why world religions suppress the name, which is above all names, and or why world religions will not call upon the name which is above all names. Yes, indeed, think much bigger when it comes to this worldwide beast system with its names of blasphemy, as it has infiltrated every aspect of civilization, even our medical systems. Find out how this worldwide beast system has changed times and law and eliminated the celestial clock and calendar of Yahuwah and have consciously replaced it with the traditions of men, attempting to consciously ensure that every human being is imprisoned to the financial beast system as well. Yes, think bigger when it comes to the beast and its systemic worldwide names of blasphemy, as it does have an impact on our inheritance, as we can here and now avoid fellowship with the fruitless works of darkness, as all matters being reproved are manifested by the light and why we remain so thankful and appreciative of Bereans who continue to test and prove all things, especially the ones that understand that scriptural wisdom is the power to learn and calculate the truth without attempting to fit it into any man-made agenda. We continue to call upon the name that these scriptural study videos provide value to you and your loved ones. Until next time, Yahuwah willing, all the best in the name which is above all names.